I'm posing this here now because I really have nothing to gasp at. My life had become a walking nightmare and it was all due to one mistake. I'm looking for help, or any way out. If not that, then at least some record of my final days and if I can at least save one person from my fate, then this would be worth it. I'll try to start from the beginning. You see, your parents and your guardians have always told you not to talk to strangers and that was pretty easy instruction to follow when I was a kid but as an adult, if I don't talk to strangers, how am I supposed to get laid? Everything was going great for me. I'm 26, single, have a great paying job and an awesome condo in downtown Calabari and I just bought my dream car, a 2015 Camaro. Well, at least everything was going great for me, on paper. But for some reason, I was always... Well, at least everything was going great for me on paper. But for some reason, I always have this nagging feeling that I'm not doing well enough. Some days I just feel empty inside, I'll be straight up, I try to negate this emptiness with drugs, sex and alcohol and it worked for a short time, for a brief period during my drunken numbness, that intense orgasm or that epiphany inducing high, everything is alright and this type was working okay for me but when I look back, it was this hunger that left me vulnerable, her name was Aliona. You see, during this time, I was pursuing any avenue I could that would lead to sex. Co-workers, Tinder, Craigslist, just cruising up and down the 17th avenue on my car, raves, bars, Instagram and even Facebook. When it came to the book of faces, usually it was just me left creeping, so when this hot Russian brunette added me out of nowhere, I jumped on it immediately. It didn't matter that we had zero mutual friends, she had this ivory pale skin, long dark hair, large dark eyes and sanguine red lips, just my type. I accepted and I instantly started talking to her. You have accepted her friend request. Me, hi, who are you? A, I'm your new girlfriend. I'll just say this quickly, her name started with A obviously, that's why I'm just gonna say A instead of her whole name, it may save some time. Me, uh, great, when's their first date? A, in the dream. Me, perfect, I promise I'll dream about you tonight if you dream about me. A, where are you from? Me, like. Me, Canada, you? A, Russia. Me, when are you coming to visit? And this was the extent of our conversation. I will link a screenshot. I blurred out our names and images because I don't want anyone getting caught up in this or you know what happened to me. I'm pretty sure whatever it is, it could appear with any name or profile picture. And that was it. She never replied after my last question. It was an honest, light-hearted joke, but I half wished she would say that she had plans to visit soon so we could meet up and maybe hook up. That wasn't really an invitation, was it? Regardless, I did dream of her that night, if you can call it a dream. I went to bed that night, rather uneventfully, drank half a bottle of wine to myself, texted girls and bros read it until I couldn't keep my eyes open any longer. I went to the bathroom, took out my contacts, came back into my room, shut the door and collapsed into my lovely bed. It was probably around 3am when I awoke and it was still completely dark, I must have woken up early. I tried to get out of bed and take a leak but there's one problem, I couldn't move a muscle. I glanced to my right and well there was another problem, there was a enormous head of a massive fanged beast breathing down me inches away from my face. I could feel the heat of its breath on me, the saliva oozing out of its mouth dripping onto my face. It had eyes darker than anything I'd ever seen before. Hair had covered its huge head, long, dark, matted and grotesque, giant fangs bordered by blood, red lips. I tried to do a lot of things at once, first scream as fucking loud and hard as I could but my mouth was glued shut. Next I tried to flail, punch, kick, jab this thing away from me, but my body wouldn't respond to any signal that I gave. Luckily the beast didn't move either, but that did not console me in the least. I tried to look away, but no matter where I looked, its hideous image would appear in my field of vision. This lasted for what seemed like hours, sometimes I would fall back asleep only to wake up to the same thing and the cycle would start over again. After what seemed like a day, I opened my eyes again and there was a difference this time. There was light out and no monster. I blinked and then to my surprise, I sat up in my bed. It was just a dream, if you could call it that. I was covered in greasy sweat. I reached my phone, 12.17am. 
I felt so drained. It, I just stayed in my bed browsing the internet and screwing around on my phone for a while, trying to take my mind off of that horrible dream. I opened up Tinder and looked through my matches, moments, one of them was particularly risky, and I got excited and screenshotted to save it. I'm not sharing that one with you. This inadvertently brought me to my camera's photo album, which had I don't remember taking, there really didn't seem to be anything in it. It's just a picture of my room at night, but it was taken at 3.33am, and here's a link to the photo. Whatever, I probably just hit it by accident in my sleep, or something. Damn it, I thought. I need to get out of this place. I got up, showered, dressed, and headed down to the street to Safeway to get some food. I arrived at Safeway and picked up a basket. I really had no idea what I wanted, but I figured if I just walk around I would see something I like, and you know, as I always walk down, I browse Facebook, uh, the old text message one walk multitask. I, I looked back at my conversation with Aliona and the only development was a scene at 3.33am by my last message. I sighed. What was I even hoping for this completely random Russian girl anyway? I looked up as I was walking down the meat aisle. I felt a wisp warm air on my neck like breathing. I whirled around so fast I almost lost my basket but there was no one near me. I was completely alone Except for a weird itchy tingling feeling and the colour of my shirt, I, I reached into it and slowly extracted a long greasy dark brown hair. My hair is short and black and I haven't had a brunette over in a while. I immediately lost my appetite. I bolted out of that safe way like a shoplifter. I slammed my basket down with the others, sprinted across the parking lot and jumped into the Camaro. I rushed home and got into my condo never looking back. I pulled into the underground parking and found my spot. I always back in because I just love how my car looks facing outwards. I get to my space and look in the rear view and there she is. Aliona is in the back seat of my fucking car. There she is with a blank look in her face. She looks exactly like a profile picture. Luxurious long hair, crimson lips and large oval eyes. They're almost black. Her expression slowly turns into a smile, revealing pearly white teeth. The seem almost sharpened. I got out of there so fast I don't even remember doing it. My car is probably still there in the middle of the fucking parking lot. I must have blacked out a little bit. All I know is that I got into my condo and got into my room and now I'm on my computer. Do you ever get this feeling when you're browsing Reddit late at night and something outside is watching you or right behind you and you're afraid to turn around? Well I have that right now, permanently, and I'm too afraid to sleep, I've been up for 47 hours straight, can anyone help me? This is an update from that story, I'll read it on. If you haven't read my first post, here it is. First of all, I need to thank everyone for the advice, I know I could turn to this community for help, I think sleep paralysis is definitely what I experienced, and that might have been what set from my mind paranoia and hallucinating. Hearing other people's input really helped me think, hey, maybe this is all in my head. However, I am posting this update because I haven't been able to rule out something that is really upsetting and is going on. Sorry, I haven't been able to update for a while. I'm finally back on the computer again, but I need to do this quickly. I woke up, collapsed on my computer desk, raising my head from a saliva coated keyboard I tried to orient myself I don't remember dreaming and that was a relief my back was killing me my body must have finally given in after being awake for two days straight I looked at the time and it was 3 45 p.m. I stretched and slowly rose from my office chair I tried to remember what had brought me here on my first thought shit my car I threw on a house coat and some slippers and rushed outside into the corridor and called the elevator I still wasn't in a good frame of mind yet you see, my elevator is covered in mirrors and for some reason I couldn't stand it, I kept feverishly looking around left to right behind, eventually I just closed my eyes and waited. I got to the basement and I got to the basement and ran to my parking spot and there she was. My beautiful red Camaro parked perfectly in the parking spot, no trace of any weird ghostly Russian chick. I breathed a huge sigh of relief and went over to the car, still nervous, I opened the door and turned on the inside lights and checked for the back seat. Nothing out of the ordinary, maybe the entire thing was just in my head. Feeling a little better, I left the parking lot and headed back to my condo. 
I looked at myself in the elevator mirror. Damn, I looked like shit. I had huge circles under my bloodshot eyes and pale, sullen look. My beard had grown a lot and I just felt clammy and gross. I got back to the place and I went into the washroom, dropped my house coat, hopped in the shower. Man, showers are amazing. I just closed my eyes and let the hot water wash over everything that happened. My moment of bliss was disturbed when my foot touched something bristly and slimy. I, I looked down and clogging my shower drain was a mass of brown and black hair. Fuck, I yelled. I wanted to get out of there. I had to be sure I wasn't seeing things, so I bent down and picked it up. As I picked up the large mass of stringy wet hair, I wanted to throw up. As I moved to open the shower door, I slipped and smashed my head on the wall. I blacked out. I woke up again on the bottom of the shower, the water from above cascading over me, vomit and the mass of hair was blocking the drain. The water was slowly rising. I tried moving every muscle I could, I tried to scream for help, but my body just wouldn't respond. Did the fall paralyze me? My breathing became rushed and erratic, my eyes darted frantically and then I saw a shape appear up against the glass of the shower door. Two hands pressed themselves against the glass and a large shadow appeared. The figure pressed its head against the glass and a red mark materialized, lips coated in deep crimson blood left their impression upon the glass. The blood began to drip down the glass as the water level was rising and my terror with it. The water that used to be warm was now frigid and covered my mouth and then my nose. I could feel it agonily force its way into my lungs. As I drew my last breath my vision faded and then my eyes opened once more. I woke in a heap on the shower floor. The water was off and I was covered in blood and puke. I, I screamed, clutched my head and it was another nightmare, much worse than the last. I slowly stood up and got out of the shower. I look at the damage. It was a good cut but it had clotted already. I went to my medicine cabinet and took out a bandage and some tape and covered the wound. I washed my face and glanced over at the shower door. Condensation covered it except for two places. Two vague outlines of hands with red smudge in the middle. I tried my best not to freak out, but I was scared shitless once again. Fuck, 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 fuck. I need to get out of here, my thought. My first thought was my friend, Jana. She was more like a friend with benefits, but I could trust her to help me. She lived in a house in the northwest, about 20 minutes away. I put on some clothes, I grabbed my phone to call her. I noticed I had some messages, but those could wait. I found her in my contacts and pressed call. Hello? Jay, hey, what's up? I need to come over. Do you have beer? Obviously I have beer, but... What the hell, Rob? It's 3 a.m. Shit, sorry, I didn't see the time. It's an emergency. I'll be right there. Wait, what? I hung up and grabbed my keys and headed out the door. I never looked back once. I got in my car and sped off as fast as I could. I never looked at any mirrors. Something told me I needed to be there soon. I pulled into a driveway, got out and knocked at the door. As I waited, I looked at the time on my phone and it's 3.17 a.m. Man, it was really late. I owe her one for sure. Then I heard it coming and she opened the door. What the hell, Rob? It's so late. She was wearing cute blue pajamas where her strawberry blonde hair was dangling messy about her shoulders. I instantly gave her a tight hug, so thankful to see my friendly human. Ew, you smell like puke. What happened to your head? I'll explain everything. Thank you so much. Grab us some beers. I need to use your shower and computer. She sighed. Alright, it better be good. I headed up to her upstairs and uneventually cleaned myself up. When I came back down, Jenna had brought out some pilsners and was sitting on the couch. I brought up to my no sleep post from my phone and handed her my phone. Here, read this. What the hell is this? Just read it. It'll explain. Where's your computer? My laptop is right here. What do you need it for? I just need to write something quick. Thanks. She handed me the MacBook and I opened it up and began writing this update while she read the previous events beside me. As it was finishing up, I glanced over and it was 3.33am. If you are just joining me now, links to the two previous posts. Three loud knocks animated from Jana's front door. I nearly pissed myself. Jana jumped up a little on the couch. Who the fuck is that? I asked Jenna. Jenna just looked at me and shook her head. Okay, time to man up. Shit, alright, I'll go see who it is, I told her. No, it's fine, it's my house, she told me. No, Jay, stay right here, I'll be back. I stood up slowly, thank god I hadn't actually pissed myself. I walked forwards to the main hallway. The hairs on my neck bristed as I crept towards the door. I, I looked through the door's peephole, total darkness. I took a deep breath. 
To my relief, there was a formidable looking policeman standing on the stub. The source of knocking, I stood up and straightened alert. Are you the owner of this vehicle, he asked, and pointed at the Camaro. My car lights were on. Did I forget to turn them off? Yes, I replied. Well, you should turn the lights off and make sure it's locked. There have been reports of theft in the area. Oh, okay, I'll do that right away. Thank you, sir. He seemed to gaze over my shoulder as he backed away. Sorry to disturb you. Take care, he said. As he turned around and walked back down to the walkway, his patrol truck parked in the street. I was about to walk out and turn the lights on my car off when I heard a creak behind me. I spun around so fast I almost fell. Jenna was behind me and she giggled. Jesus, Jay. You can't just do that to me right now. I told you to stay put. <laughs> sorry. She tried to contain her laughter. You're not the boss of me, and you need to lighten up. I grabbed the pills in their bottle from her and hand and shook the whole thing. I let out a satisfying burp. Maybe you're right. I looked back in the car. The headlamps lighting up and otherwise pitch black. I faltered for a second about walking out there alone in the creepy darkness. I wasn't about to let Gianna think I'm a complete pussy, and it was strengthened a bit now with a bit of liquid courage. I didn't bother putting on shoes and stepped out on the stub. Be right back, I said to her. I walked over to the car, unlocked and opened the driver's side door and reached in to turn the lights off. Position, that's weird, I thought to myself. Usually they turn off automatically, out of habit. I looked into the darkness of the back seat, nothing there. I set the lock to shut down. As I turned back to the house, I saw movement in the corner of my eye. I instantly jumped and ran back inside and slammed the door. I stood with my back against the door, breathing heavily. Ha ha ha, what's gone into your rub? Janice stood up there, chuckling. Yeah, there, th there's something out there, I stammered. Yeah, there sure is, look, she said, still giggling. I slowly turned around and looked through the peephole again. This time it was crystal clear. A large jackrabbit ran across the lawn, disappeared into the dark. I turned back and now looked at Janice, standing there with a huge grin on her face. And that's when it all hit me, like a massive wave of desperation, powerlessness and sorrow. I slid down to the floor and burst into tears. This is what my life has come. Running shitless from fucking rabbits. I used to be on top of the world. I was afraid of absolutely nothing. Invincible. What did I do to deserve this? I hadn't led the most commendable life. I wasn't the greatest role model, true, but I didn't spread negativity or hate. I didn't lie, cheat or steal. For the past week, I've just been running and running. When will it stop? What do I have to do? Jenna came over and sat beside me. She put her arms around me and I collapsed into her lap. Hey, hey there. You're alright, she whispered. I grabbed her hand. Thank you, I blubbered. Sorry. Shush, don't be. We just sat there for a while until I calmed down. I sat back. Sorry, things have just been really strange for me recently. I said as I wiped my eyes and nose. That's totally fine, Rob, she replied. But what happened? And what happened to your head? I just fell. It's not bad. Here, look. Let me take a look at it, she said as she tenderly took off the bandage. There's nothing there, she said with a worried look on her face. What? I stood up and jogged to the hallway mirror. Sure enough, my head looked completely fine. No gash, no wound. I traced my fingers along my scalp. Did I imagine it hit my head? I must have. There's no way I could have hailed that quickly. So what happened exactly? Jenna asked. Did you read the post I showed you? No, your phone glitched out, she explained. Why didn't you say something? I tried not to tell you. She'd been so amazing to her so far. I don't know. You seem so involved with... Whatever you are writing on my laptop, I didn't want to bug you. Okay, let's pull it up on your laptop. She walked back over to the couch and I stopped dead in my tracks. Please tell me you see that. My stomach turned and my heart sank. See what? Jenna asked. I pointed at the window and Jenna let out a high-pitched squeal. On the window, beside the couch, there were two large handprints and between them a smudge red lipstick slowly dripping. Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you enjoyed the story. Um, no, I did not create the story or make it up or anything. This was straight from Reddit on the no sleep uh, section of Reddit. Um, so the story is mainly in three parts. That's why there was three. Like as the picture changed to a different picture, that's where the new part began. And uh, you know the, the story just continues from there. It's not like a change or anything really. Um, it's the same story from the same person. So um, this may not be true. I, I do believe it's true, but this came straight from Reddit, and I'm not taking any credit for the story. So I'll leave it three links to three uh, original posts in the description if you want to go read off the website straight off i'm sorry that something said i said wrong and stuff i'm not really great at um 
story, uh, storytelling, sorry, I can't even fucking say this or anything, but I'm not really great at storytelling, so I do apologise, and hopefully in the future, I do get a bit better at it, so... I really do hope you enjoy it guys, but at least leave some support on the video because it took me like an hour or two just to edit this It was a lot of mistakes I made and um, it was just really really fun making this video and seeing the results at the end of it So I hope you guys enjoy and make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy and if you want to see some more Let me know in the comment section below and other than that guys. I hope you have a great day and um, yeah, thank you so much for watching